Dosti here with Dosti's View, and I wanted to talk today about someone who's had an extraordinary influence on telemarketing, and that is Russell Rainey. I ran into Russell, gosh, when was the first time I met Russell? I think it was 93 at a uh, uh, at one of the annual um, outdoor retailer shows. I think it was in Boreal, California. Uh, a, a small resort, but it was actually, that's where I met him, okay? And he showed me his new super loop binding, which uh, when I first saw it was kind of laughable because it was just um, some um, bungee cord, basically, uh, that was strapped to a cable to a toe plate that you just lifted onto your heel and the bungee provided the spring tension. And I love the simplicity of it. And I was surprised that I actually noticed an improvement in my skiing. Uh, Russell abandoned the, uh, the bungee cord pretty quickly. Uh, and then he went through a couple of iterations before he got something that was fairly solid. And that was the front throw super loop cable binding. And one thing that Russell always did that was new and different and unique is he recognized before the rest of us did that the pivot point of the cable that provided the tension on our boot to help us compress the bellows in our plastic boots and, and even without plastic boots with leather boots, it just added a tension to balance against. But the further back that pivot point was, the stronger the retaining tension was in the cable binding. Russell was the first one to key into that. And so um, all of his versions of the Superloop binding had an adjustable pivot point. Now it only adjusted it about a half an inch from the most forward position to the most rearward position, but it made a difference. It was noticeable. It was not dramatic. And the, the front throw super loop um, was a, a significant improvement. He had an intermediate version in between that, um, that was the beginning of super loops pulling out of skis. And the problem with that one is he only had one compression spring and it limited out very quickly. So very soon, uh, as you were lifting your heel, you weren't just, um, you weren't getting just a strong tension from the spring, you were getting exponential tension from basically a, a solid cable. And that tension went nonlinear and the forces that were applied to the binding at that point made it very easy to pull the binding out of the ski. Um, part of the problem there was uh, Russell's mounting pattern, which was an improvement on the old classic three pin three hole mounting pattern. He added two making it five, but it didn't improve the surface area significantly enough to prevent the binding being ripped out of the ski. So he then came up with an intermediate mounting plate, which was the forerunner to the mounting pattern for the hammerhead. It was a six hole pattern and then he had some inserts in this plastic plate that you mounted his five hole mounting pattern uh, binding to, but the attachment to the ski was a six hole pattern. Um, and Russell realized with competition from the Targa that he needed to up his game even more than what the Superloop did, even more um, adjustable pivot points than what uh, the Superloop allowed, and um, just more over, and, and a larger mounting pattern. So he developed the hammerhead, which was a six hole mounting pattern, uh, which was an inch and a half by uh, three inches, a significant amount of um, surface area, six holes, um, 
very, very, very few people were able to rip a hammerhead out of a ski from that point on. But the main thing that Russell did is he built on the concept of the adjustable pivot point and he moved the pivot point from being in the same plane as the sole of your boot, which is what the Superloop does, uh, the Switchback, the Targa, almost all 75 millimeter bindings. And he moved the pivot location underneath the boot. And he, uh, it was a dramatic range, one through five. And that was a revolution. Now, Russell wasn't the first one to come out with underfoot cable routing. In fact, Black Diamond did that with their pit bull. Um, but they only had a single cable and they ran into a common problem. Basically, the force that was generated in that single cable on the pit bull was so high that um, the, the pieces that were swaged onto either end would they weren't swaged with enough power or uh, and or the cable wasn't thick enough and so the cable or the swage usually typically at the front would pop off <laughs> in a deep knee telly and then uh, basically the spring uh, would eject out the front and get lost in the snow and um, you were kind of in, in a not good position so what Russell did different than the pit bull was um, it was dual cables um, and it was a much bigger spring but the most important thing that he did was the adjustable uh, pivot locations with the hammerhead and that has been adapted ever since then with um, TTS um, who else has uh, done that um, well, TTS is the main one. Oh, and then, of course, um, the, uh, the replacements for the hammerhead, the axle, and the vise. Um, NTN bindings generally do not have an adjustable pivot point except for TTS, which only works with NTN boots because of the tech inserts that are required to use the tech toe in a TTS binding. But the adjustable cable is an important factor and that was pioneered by the hammerhead. Now one may ask well how often do you need to adjust that pivot point? Not very often. In fact once you have adjusted it and figured out where you like it then you're done adjusting it. But the beauty of the hammerhead, the beauty of the axle, the beauty of the vise, the beauty of TTS is that pivot point is adjustable and so you can fine-tune it to what you want um, and so uh, hats off to Russell Rainey if it wasn't for Russell um, there's all kinds of things that would not have been developed and and Russell will tell you he was you know like he didn't come up with underfoot cable routing but he did pioneer adjustable pivot points and that's an amazing thing and and Josh has wondered why we don't have um, adjustable pivot points on NTN that's a really long discussion. We're not going to get into it. Um, I just think it's worth pointing out. Thank you, Russell Rainey, for giving us adjustable pivot points, for giving us underfoot cable routing and pointing the direction to the future so that um, Telemark can not just be a, a license to suck, it can be an opportunity to demonstrate um, a very fluid, sexy, sensual turn in snow that, um, as far as I'm concerned, increases the ecstasy that's possible in skiing powder through telly. And um, so thank you, Russell. You're helping us all spread telemark.